Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to do variables in Adobe Photoshop. Before I get started, I do have an announcement to make. A lot of people have asked um, for access to the files that I use to create these videos. So I thought what I would do moving forward is to create a post um, whenever, I, whenever I post a new video to create, create a post on my Patreon page with a zip file that contains all the files from that particular video. I'll set it for purchase for five dollars um, unless you are already a monthly subscriber on the patreon page then you'll get access to that for free and for all videos moving forward so if you want to support the channel a little bit more if you want to have access to the files here and use them for your own purpose then I will leave a link down in the, the description to the patreon page and uh, specifically a link to this particular video so that you can go ahead and you can download those yourself for purchase if you're um, interested. So anyway, Photoshop variables. Um, I don't really recommend using Photoshop for doing variable work, but I've had some people ask how to do it, so I figured I'd just go ahead and do a video on it. In my folder here, I have a couple subfolders, which I'll get into later. I have my um, Photoshop file here, my CSV file, which is going to contain the data set that we're going to be using. Photoshop needs the data to come in via a uh, CSV file. And then I have some JPEG images here. Uh, this untitled is for an error log later that we'll get into. Um, so that's my setup for my folder here. I'm going to open up Photoshop here and show you the file that we're going to be working on. And basically this is just a ID pad badge or a card for a conference. Um, obviously this is a super simple uh, design that's not meant to be anything major. This is just to show you how to do the variable part of the variables in Photoshop. So I have here everything set up on its own layer. Uh, layers that I don't want to change I have locked. So I have a background layer that's just white. This word access is not going to change. That's going to be static. Same as the conference name up here in the 2025. That's going to be uh, static. The rest of the items are what are going to be changing by the uh, variables method. So I have three different levels here. And basically this is if you have had this conference and there's different tiers of access, you know, compared to what you pay or whatever the case is. So each one of these has a different border color, essentially. And then this information here where it says level three, which I have here under level name in my um, uh, layers palette here, those are what are going to change as well as the photo and the first and last name. So that's our basic setup. Each one of these has to be set up on its own layer so that we can go ahead and we can set those with the um, variable setup. So now I have my CSV file that I have, op I have it open here in LibreOffice, but you can have it um, access it with uh, Excel or Google Sheets, anything that allows you to do a database here. The first, uh, uh, or uh, excuse me, the first row of data is all the header rows. So I have my first and last, the photo. The photos here don't have an absolute reference because they are in the same folder. If you want to avoid having to put the absolute reference to wherever it's stored on your computer, I would suggest just putting them in the same folder as your CSV file. Here I have the level access, and that's what's going to change right here. It's going to either say level one, two, or three. And then here you have level one, level two, and level three, and those correspond to these three layers in my Photoshop file with the different background colors. Now, one of the cool things that you can do with variables in Photoshop is you can hide or show layers. The way you do that is to set it to either true or false. So I'll get into that part of it in a few minutes, but in our data set here, we need to set the layers that we want to have true or shown as true and the layers that we want to have hidden as false. So in this case, let's say we have here, he is going to be on level three access. So we can go ahead and change this to say false 
for the first two layers and true for the third layer. Same thing here. This person is level two, so they're gonna have false, true, false. This is gonna be true, false, false. False, true, false. True, false, false. True, false, false. And level three, this is gonna be false, false, and true. So I save that just to update it, but basically, that way you have everything set to only show the layer that you want to show. And I'll, I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. But that's our data set. Again, if you wanna have, uh, if you don't want the absolute reference for the image, just put it in the same folder and then that way you can just put it by the actual name of the file here. So our data set again needs to be uh, saved as a CSV file, not as an Excel file or um, something else you want to have it saved as a CSV. So with that done, we're going to go ahead and go back into Photoshop. We're going to go up to Image, and we're going to go Variables, and hit Define. And this is where we're basically going to link all of our variables in our Photoshop file with our CSV file. So I've already done this, um, but basically if this was empty, this would come up and it's going to show a list of all the layers that corresponds here. And then here is where we need to set the variable type. So in this case, we're gonna do the last name, right? So we'll go last name, we're gonna set this as a text replacement, and we need to set it with the same name that we have on our header row of our CSV file. So in this case, it has to be last with a capital L. You, wanna, you need to make sure that it is case sensitive. So it's always a good idea to either just copy this and paste it. Um, the next one here, if I go down first name, it's set to first. Conference name, that's gonna be static, so I don't wanna change that. I don't wanna go here to level name, and this is where we have it set to whatever level it is in our CSV file. Access is gonna remain um, static as well. Photo, this is where we're going to do a pixel replacement. It automatically sees that there is not text, it's an actual image. And so here is where we can tell it we actually want to replace this photo with another photo. So you wanna check on the pixel replacement checkbox there, and you're going to name it with the same uh, header name up here, which is photo, which I have here. And then here is where you can set it to the different kind of uh, uh, fill method. So either have it fit, have it fill up, uh, as is, conform. You can change the alignment, whether it comes from the top or the middle. Uh, in this case, since I have a circle as my um, uh, photo placement, and this is a, the photo is just basically set as a, a, a clipped mask there. So I just want to set it to fill, and I want to set it to the center alignment. Photo placement, we don't need to change. Level three is where, this is where we're going to sh start changing the visibility of the different layers. So we're not gonna replace any pixels here. We're just gonna change whether it shows the layer or not. So I'm gonna click on the visibility checkbox there. And again, this is level three, so I wanna make sure to name it to the same header as level three in my CSV file. Level two, same thing. Level one, same thing, okay? And again, these are case sensitive, so I recommend copying and pasting these in um, or else you may end up with errors. Uh, the last level or last layer is the background layer, which is gonna also remain static, so we don't need to change that at all. So now we've set all of our variables to the various layers in our Photoshop file. Now we're gonna go to next and this is where we're going to select the data set that we created with our CSV and apply it. So you can see it's already set up here, but I'm gonna go ahead and click import. I'm gonna to go to select file, and I'm going to select the CSV file that we created. I'll hit open. I'll go ahead and make sure that this is checked here for the first uh, column. Uh, use first column for data set names and then replace existing data set names. This is useful if you add data to the to the data set down the road. So let's say we have everything set up on our PSD file, we come back to our uh, CSV file and we add three or four more names and information here. 
when you come in here just make sure this is checked and it'll basically update all of the information from that file so now I can scroll through each of the different data sets this first one here is for Gary Singleton if I click on the next button here this is for the second record this is for Jane you'll notice that her level access is only level 2 and her uh, background color is now blue and as I scroll through the rest of the data you can see the information changing as well as the photo changing at the same time so there's only seven different records uh, again I wouldn't recommend going past make maybe 50 records because when you batch this all out these are going to save as uh, Photoshop files and it's going to bog down your computer if you uh, don't have a lot of uh, memory or um, your hard drive is almost full so in this case I would kind of keep this with 50 or less it's much better to use uh, InDesign for um, data merge however this is all set up now so again if I just scroll through you can see everything is all set up and everything is good to go and I'm going to go ahead and click OK so now I have all of my data merged over I have my data source selected now I need to batch process this to actually save all of these files individually so this is where these two folders are going to come in handy right, since I already created one for PDFs and one for PSDs <coughs> excuse me um, I'm going to go to file I'm going to go to export and I'm going to go to layers or excuse me data sets as files and this is going to look in that CSV file and automatically create all of these I'm going to select the folder so this is going to be the PSDs folder and I, I can do this for an individual person in the data set or in this case I want to do it for all seven so I just click all data sets down here you can also add extra names to the uh, to the file itself uh, but I'm just going to leave it as is and then uh, everything else I'm just going to leave as is and I'm going to click OK and you can see some things are happening in the background if this file was a little bit more graphics heavy it might take a little bit longer that was pretty quick but if I go back to my folder here now you can see all of my Photoshop files have been created and if I just click on an individual one and open it up this has her information her her level name which was changed and obviously the color the background color changed as well so that's how to create the PSD files but I'm sure most people are going to be needing a PDF because they're going to be sending this out to print so what we want to do here is we want to create a um, action to batch all of these as a PDF instead of a PSD so to do that I'm gonna go up to window I'm gonna to go to actions now I've already created these here I'm gonna go ahead and I'll just delete it so that uh, I can do it from scratch but we're going to uh, create an action to save this as a uh, PDF and then close the file out afterwards. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go click on the plus button here to create a new action. And I'm just going to call this as export as PDF. I'll click record. And so now it's going to record whatever I do up here. Since I already have a file open, I'm just going to go to file, save as. I'm going to change this from Photoshop to Photoshop PF, uh, PDF and I'm going to select the folder that I just um, created I'm gonna hit save I'll click OK through the warning there and I'm just gonna click on my high quality print PDF setting I'll hit save PDF I'll just hit yes and after a second there you can see it went ahead and it created my PDF here so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go up here and close this. I'm going to go back to my window, go to actions, and you can see it, it has two steps in here, the save and the close. Now I'm done. I'm going to hit the stop and my uh, action is all set up the way I want it to go ahead and export the entire uh, set of PSD files. So from here, I'm going to go to file, automate, batch, and here I'm going to select my action that I just created export as PDF my source is going to come from a folder which I'm going to choose which is this Photoshop folder so I'm going to choose 
I'm going to change my destination to folder and make sure this is set to this PDF here. Hit choose. And again, if you want to give it some kind of extra extension or document name of some kind, you can do that here. The last uh, thing here is you can either set it to stop for errors if there's some kind of issue, or in this case, I set it to log errors to file. And this is where I created this little untitled um, text file so that if there's any issues, it'll just log it there. So this is all set up the way I want it. I'm not going to mess with anything else. And I'm just going to click OK. And you can see our little uh, spinning doohickey here comes up to show me that things are going on in the background. And after a second or two, it's going to pop you back into the main menu here in Photoshop. And if I go back to my finder, you can see here it's created all of the various PDFs from those folders. So if I just open a couple of them, you can see each one of them are different. And that's it. So now I have both a folder with all of my Photoshop files individually and my PDF files individually as well. That way I can go ahead and either send individual ones to my print service provider, print them out, whatever I want to do with them, or if I want to edit my PSD files further, then I can do that. Let's just say, for instance, um, I don't like the placement of her uh, photo. I can go back and open up her Photoshop, Photoshop file and I can just kind of play around with the placement of her photo a little bit to make it look better uh, like that. And then from there I can save it out as a PDF or I can just save this um, Photoshop file individually. So that's it. That's how you do variables. Uh, again, if you make a change to your uh, CSV file and you update with more records, then when you come back to your variables and your data sets, you just have to import it again and it'll import all of the additional records um, that you may have added. So that's it. If you have questions, please leave them down below. Thank you for watching all the way to the end of the video. Please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, 2025 is just hitting now and uh, I'm going to try to be a little bit more uh, regimented on how many videos I do and just trying to put out as much content as I can. Again, if you want to have access to the files that I used to create this video, I'm going to go ahead and I'll save everything as a zip file, put it on my Patreon page for download um, if you're a member or for purchase if you just want to purchase it individually. Thanks for watching, folks. I appreciate all the views. Leave a comment if you have a question. Otherwise, I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.